Hello, today I'm going to try to install this Brembo Extra Line Dimple Performance Brake Rotors and this uh, Brembo Extra Line Brake Pads on my GT86. So I've not done a brake job before and I've had to do a lot of research to arrive at this stage but what I'm going to try to do now is to run through the tools that I'm going to be using chronologically because from what I've seen, um, there isn't any video on YouTube that sort of explains all the tools that are required to get the job done. So I hope I've got this right, uh, but here we go anyway. So first things first, uh, two-ton trolley jack with the um, rubber frame protector in, inside, obviously, to jack the car from the front. Um, and then moving on, we've got the torque wrench to remove the wheels. And then once the wheel comes off, I'm going to be using, um, that's it, this ratchet wrench here with, a, this is a 3.8 drive. I'm going to use this to um, use use this 14 mil, 14 mil uh, hex adapter to remove the existing brake calipers. Um, once the caliper comes off, a bunch of gloves here, I've got cable ties here to hold the caliper against the uh, control arm so that the, the, the weight isn't suspended by the uh, brake line. Um, once that's done, um, I think I'm going to use this 17mm uh, uh, wrench to, to get the uh, caliper carrier off and this um, hammer is going to be used to, to, to hit this because they are on quite, uh, quite tight. Um, so let's see uh, what we're going to do next. Um, once that's done, uh, I'm going to pop the, uh, sorry, before that's done actually, I'm going to pop the old brake pads off obviously. And then I'm going to remove the old brake rotors. And once the old brake rotors are removed, I've got the stainless steel brushes here to clean the wheel hub, to clean the surface of wheel hub. Uh, so once that's done, the new rotors can go in its place. And uh, once that's done, the uh, caliper carrier can go back on. And for that, I've got this 17mm socket with a 3.8 drive. And this here is a uh, half inch to 3.8 adapter. So I can use my uh, torque wrench to, to torque the new caliper uh, carrier back in its place. There is one thing that I forgot to uh, retrieve from my storage area and that is a Loctite thread lock. So thread lock needs to be applied on the uh, caliper carrier uh, bolts before they are uh, replaced. But anyway, um, so once that's done, I'm going to use, um, let's see, I'm going to use this, uh, that's right, so it'd be time to install the new brake pads, right? So I'm going to, to apply this anti squeal paste on the ears of the, the new brake pads and I'm going to pop them into the uh, caliper carrier um, and then before sliding the new caliper back on I'm going to use this to compress the piston to push them back in, in, in its place and then uh, I'm going to use this to lubricate the slide pins on the caliper so once that's done, that new piston, the new caliper will go back on, and then uh, I'll use this fourteen mil hex socket with with the adapter again to torque the uh, caliper back on at the correct torque. Now, once all that's done, um, it's we're ready to put the wheels back on. So I'm going to use this um, anti seize copper anti seize to. Uh, uh, so I'll lubricate the, the lug nuts before putting the wheels back on with the top wrench and the 19 mil adapter that we started off with. So hopefully that's everything that we will need and I hope I haven't missed anything out because like I mentioned this is the first time I'm doing this job. Now it's going to be a bit difficult to take videos outside because I'm working alone but I'll try my best to take some pictures and sort of insert them uh, maybe at the end of this video, uh, maybe as a slideshow. And I've also got this really handy bag here to put everything in so I can take them all out, keep everything clean uh, right where, where, where I'm working outside. So now I'm just going to get the uh, small tube of 
Loctite Tread Lock, and then we should All be right. good to go. And I found that little bottle of Loctite Tread Locker. So we're good to go. Alright, so I've packed up a few additional things. Like this sheet of bubble wrap here. So I, I can use this to um, to line, line the ground and lay the old brake rotors on top of, of it. So they don't get scratched. I've also got this bag of racks here. And a bottle of IPA, which may come in handy. Um, I'm then going to use this scissor jack to support the uh, car from the side jacking point, the front side jacking point, just in case the hydraulic jack collapses. Uh, this is quite a cheap unit, and I'm not really confident in how well it will hold up. Um, you know, maybe the valve will leak over time, or maybe it will just release all the pressure and come crashing down. So that's a risk that I want to avoid. So, without further ado, let's get a change of plans. I can't jack the car up from the front because this isn't a low profile jack and it's just simply too high to fit under the front of the car to get under the jacking point. So, I'm going to jack it up from the side here. And I've done a bit of uh, sort of estimation, and I reckon even if this jack collapses, the, the height of this will still be quite high above the ground. And, It'll be high enough that the, the rotors wouldn't hit the ground anyway because it's got to clear that amount of travel for the rotors to be able to hit the ground so i reckon we'll be all right using this uh, as a jacking point for this piece of work so i'm going to keep the scissor jack in the boot now and continue working this way and now that we've got the wheel off we can see the original advix brake pads on the uh shim. all right now that we've got the wheel off we can see the advix brake pads and the shim that covers it now, the hardware is, is also new as they've been replaced by Toyota. So I'm going to keep those and we'll install the Brembo pads without the shim because it didn't come with any. So here we go. So let's get this caliper off and do all the other so stuff. One thing I forgot to mention is I've taken the new rotors and I've overlaid them here just to make sure that they are the correct uh, size. And I'm going to do the same with the brake pads, but the next bit's a bit challenging because we've got to rotate the wheels to point the caliper outwards so we can access the bolts. And to do that, I'm going to have to start the car and use the power steering to do it. And uh, I hope in the process of doing that, this jack doesn't collapse or anything like that because the car will be pushed sideways um, a, a little bit. So let's uh, hope for the best and we'll see what happens. We've got the steering turned all the way to the left. Um, I've also gone back in to pick this up which uh, is another very important product that I forgot to take earlier so this is a brake part cleaner of course and we'll be using this quite a bit so now I've got the old brake pads off and I've zip tied the oh, rather cable tied the uh, caliper and Vix brake pads off and you can see the brake hardware is quite new oops there we go and I think they've used copper NTCs on the ears so at least we've got brand new brake hardware there so i've kind of uh, zip tied the caliper on this suspension spring here just so that it does not dangle by its weight on the brake hose now by right this by right i should remove that that bolt there to give this a little bit more play but i haven't got the uh the spanner for that so mine's a little too big so i think that's probably 12 or 13 mil which i haven't got with me um but right now it's the weight is being supported so let's go ahead and get these two hard to remove 17 mil bolts off and we can then get this uh, caliper carrier off and replace the disc itself all right let's all right i've got the caliper carrier off now that took a bit of effort now i didn't need to use the hammer to get the bottom one loose but i certainly did for the one on top and if we have a look at the old bolts they are not covered with thread lock at all and also I've noticed that the caliper slide pins are not even greased so I'm not impressed by Toyota because they just replaced the, the, the disc and the rotors as, as you've seen they're brand new so anyway I'm going to remove the old rotor now and hope everything goes smoothly from here got the old disc off again we can see that there's a lot of rust here and this can lead to warping and it's always good practice to, to grind this off before installing new new brake discs or brake rotors and again disappointed that Toyota did not clean this off so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now now as you can see the face of the wheel hub looks a lot cleaner now 
and all that took was a couple of minutes of brushing with steel wool a st rather steel bristle brush so I don't know why Toyota did not do that so the next thing to do is use bra clean to clean the uh, surface of that off and, and wipe off all the residue before installing the new brake rotors alright so now the new rotors are ready to go on and Brembo does say not to leave any grease on that on the face of the hub so we're not going to apply any anti-seize product and as you can see Toyota did not apply any of that anyway so we can go ahead now and put the new rotors on and um, yeah and then we're going to we'll replace the, uh, the brake caliper carrier and, oh yes um, one trick I've learned is to grab two wheel lug nuts so they can be screwed onto two of these uh, uh, bolts here and that will hold the disc in place while we are installing we are, while we are reinstalling the caliper carrier so it's yeah, hidden from this view that the wheel has a slight uh, negative camber but that's actually caused by the uh, geometry of the steering so we've uh, turned the steering full lock to the left and that makes this the uh, face of the hub tilt out slightly so all it's all the more important to secure the, the disc in place with these lug nuts because we don't want this brand new disc to fall off and hit the ground while we are working on it and I should point out that I've already wiped the whole disc down with Brooklyn indoors um, a couple of days ago so they're ready to go now but if they're brand new they definitely have to be wiped down to get rid of any protection oil that is applied to the surface before she so as mentioned before i'm going to apply a bit of lock pack thread lock to the top portion of this caliper carrier bolts just before bolting them back on and this should be enough so now i'm going to follow the manufacturer's specifications and talk this up to 59 foot pounds of torque now as you can see the old advix pads have brake wear indicators on both the front and rear pads however the new brembo wants to have them on the front but that's all right so i'm going to go ahead and um, grease the ears so they don't squeal when we apply the brake so once again i'm going to be using this liqui moly anti-squeal paste to do that now i've gone ahead and clean off the old copper base anti-seize paste that was applied on the brake hardware and uh, the reason I did that was because I, I'm not sure whether that would interfere with the product that I'm about to use so just before reinstalling everything I'm gonna wipe the disc down once again with a uh, brake cleaner because I, I'm afraid some of the grease might have gotten onto there in the process this product looks a bit like toothpaste but it's meant to adhere to metal very well I know I've put a little too much, so I'm going to clean it up a little bit before reinstalling the pads. The most important thing is not to get any of the product onto the friction surface. Now I've got the rear pads in place, and I've checked that none of the anti squeal product has gotten onto the uh, disc itself, nor the front surface of the pads, so we should be fine and good to go. So I'm going to do the same for the front now. Okay, now that both pads are installed, I'm going to grease the caliper guide pins and reinstall the caliper. Now the caliper went back on like a glove, so we did not have to compress the pistons further. So I'm just going to lubricate one guide pin at a time. So I'm going to leave one in while I do the other so it doesn't fall back out uh, in the process and damage the brake line. Now this synthetic grease is safe for use on rubber. So they are used where there's contact between metal and rubber. So don't use any... Um, ordinary grease with guide pins because they'll damage the rubber boots over time. So now with the caliper guide pins installed, I'm going to torque them up to 19 foot pounds of torque as per the manufacturer specification using that 14 millimeter socket with this half inch to 3 8 inch adapter. I had it set to 9 instead of 19 earlier by accident, but now we've got it correct. So I'm going to go ahead and re the caliper guide pin. Okay, now that the caliper is properly installed and torqued up to manufacturer's spec, I'm going to go ahead and apply this copper slip, copper-based anti-seize compound onto each of the bolts 
before bolting the wheel back okay, on. Okay, now that the copper slip anti-seize compound has been applied, we can bolt the wheel back on, which I'm going to do in a second using this torque wrench with the 19mm uh, impact adapter and a torque setting of 89 foot-pounds of torque, which is the manufacturer's okay, spec. Okay, that's it. The near side is done. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. But just before I do that, I'm going to go indoors to resupply. So I'm going to get a new set of gloves and some more towels because the uh, the, the grease, especially from the NTC's compound, is really messy and just mess things up. So uh, I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to be recording this side because it's essentially the same, um, except I'm hoping that it will be a, a little quicker because this is a brand new caliper. So hopefully it will be a lot cleaner to handle and I won't need to grease the guide pins. But we'll okay, see. so I'm going to readjust my car before I do the right side. However, I can now feel that the brake pedal goes all the way to, to the ground. Oops, that's the wrong, wrong feet. Wrong foot. So at the moment it's gone all the way to the end. So what I'm going to do is keep pumping this until the brake pedal becomes stiff. And it's not a bit stiff but I think this is because the vacuum reservoir has run out of vacuum. So I'm going to start the engine. And as soon as the engine started, the brake pedal starts going down again. And now it's firm. It's not at the correct height so we know that left wheel has the, both pistons have now extended out to press the brake pad against this so it can now drive um, but obviously I'm going to reposition the car so I can do the right side just before it gets too dark to do so here we've got a shiny brand new caliper with the Advix brake pads and as you can see Despite it being a brand new caliper, the guide pins are not greased either. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm going to do so when I reinstall this with the new Brembo pads and rotor.